Hello, and thank you for joining me on Victory Independence. I wanted to give you guys some eye-opening book recommendations. These are probably my top three or four, my top top books, the books that I really enjoy. And uh, one, the first one is a recent book. It's a light read, but I think it's important for people to start off with a book like this because it's kind of many books in, in one. And it's Ron Paul's book. It's, I think it's less than two years old. The Revolution, uh, a manifesto by Ron Paul. It's, it's about liberty. It's about restoring the republic. It's about the founding father's mandate. Uh, he'll open your eyes to um, taxation without representation, stuff that you don't even think about, like college grants and all these incentives the government gives to people. Uh, he does touch on economics a little bit as well and sound money. Uh, an excellent, excellent book. A great starter book. Because a lot of you are on this site because you're preparing for the economy, but it, it goes more into just preparing for your own personal life. You need to become an educated person, of, uh, an educated American if you live in the United States, um, who can help bring about a real revolution, a real change in this country. And uh, I think once you see the truth of what this country was supposed to be, I think it will really uh, excite you and you'll be rejuvenated um, as far as your patriotism and admiration for the Founding Fathers is concerned. Um, but we really do have a, a great constitution. It just needs to be enforced. Uh, the next book's much more in-depth. Uh, I think it's been around for, gosh, some time now. Maybe even a decade. Um, it's called The Creature from Jekyll Island. Great book. A must-read. Um, I guarantee you, if you're in the room with a college professor or an economist, you will be more than likely the smartest person in the room after you read this book. Uh, you know, a lot of people tout all these degrees and stuff, but the fact is, is most of the people who go to school, to business school and stuff, they're brainwashed in this government intervention economics. So, uh, reading books like these, like from Ron Paul, The Creature from Jack Wallen, really, it's an eye-opener for a lot of people. A lot of people don't know this who are well-educated. I know this because I talk to people like that all the time. Uh, the next book I don't have with me because I've loaned it out. It's, it's an excellent book. It's called Empire of Debt by William Bonner. Um, it really, um, man, it will open your eyes. Those of you guys you know, who were all for the uh, Iraq War and going to war you know, with different countries, uh, it'll really open your eyes to what the Republic, what the Founding Fathers saw in our future that we needed to avoid and that we didn't uh, avoid, and that's becoming an empire. And it really lays out the case in a very educational, great book. The next two books aren't as important that you read. Uh, these books are more about the economy. Uh, so I don't necessarily agree with the author's conclusions, but um, I think they've got some data in there that will uh, make you beyond confident for uh, as far as what's going to happen with the, the country in the next 10 or 20 years. The first one is The Great Depression Ahead. It's by Harry Dent. It's, it's a recent book. I think it came out just about six months ago. And uh, he's got some great data <coughs> Excuse me, regarding the baby boomers and uh, peak spending. You know, I don't think he calls it peak spending, but that's what I've been calling it. Um, uh, in this country, peak spending, uh, for example, average person in the United States, they spend the most money by the time they're 46 years old. That generation is now phasing out. The, the generation behind it is significantly smaller. Uh, some of the stuff, you know, I would say 50% of this book has great information. His conclusion, of course, I don't agree with uh, as far as having deflation. And then he gets into some crazy talk when he starts talking about 5,000 year cycles and 2,500 year cycles. But there's no denying the data that he presents as far as the baby boomers and, and spending habits are concerned. The next book was written, I think, again, about 10 years ago. Uh, it's called The Retirement Myth. I brought it up several times. Uh, it really is about the retirement myth. It's about pe the pension plan, uh, pension plans across the country, Social Security, uh, housing prices. Um, it really lays the groundwork for what's to come. And he wrote this about 10 years ago, and so now it kind of looks like it could, it could have been written last week. But uh, he did write this book 10 years ago, and again... A macroeconomic investor, um, someone who studies macroeconomics, 
you ignore all the day-to-day -day news. Now, the news can help give you signs and, and kind of show evidence uh, trickling in, but when you look at just the, the numbers, the demographics, um, uh, population trends, um, immigration trends, that is really what can give you a picture of what's the, what's the world, what's the country going to look like in 20 years. And that's what uh, I, I really feel that people should be focusing on when, they, when it comes to their long-term investments. So anyway, those are, those are some good books. Again, the top three, Ron Paul's Revolution Manifesto, um, William Bonner, Empire of Debt, and The Creature from Jekyll Island. So hope you guys check out those books. I know for certain you will be very happy that you did.